Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. So a really fun topic, Houston, in physics is projectile motion. Projectile motion, T-I-L-E. Projectile, you're throwing things, you can figure out where they're gonna land. But we gotta answer sort of really important fundamental question. So if I've got two objects on the top of a building, this is a building, if you didn't see it, then too bad. <laughs> one object I'm going to simply drop, and another one I'm going to launch straight, completely horizontal, no arch, okay? I'm gonna launch in uh, the horizontal direction at some velocity. And as you probably know, so I throw the rock this way, or the ball, or whatever it is. It's going to, over time, land. And if you think about this, they both have a, a VX, and they also have a VY, right? Now, in this case, both of the VYs, so the, the velocity in the Y direction, it could also be up, is zero, since I'm just launching it horizontal. So here's the weird thing. If I were to throw one as fast as I want versus drop one, because of the, the only thing acting on these is what? It's gravity, right? They will land at the exact same time. Even though one was launched this way and one is launched down or just dropped, because the only force acting on them in the Y direction is gravity, they will land at the identical time, all right? So we could say this, projectile motion is the motion is the motion of any object due to the gravity and it is, or it has a parabolic shape. So if we were to make this a graph, it's gonna look like a parabola. The other thing to make a note of is that the the, the downward force, all right, so if you think of it this way, the, the, the Vx and the Vy, they act independently of each other. So in many ways, these problems, if you ring back, we talked about uh, some time ago, we talked about, you know, free fall. This is a free fall problem with a uh, x direction. It's, it's really no different. We have to bring in some angles and such, but it's not that terribly difficult to do these problems because it's really, we te treat each, the Vx, the Vy, independently. So what are some, what are some situations where projectile motion is going to play a role? Think about this. What would be some examples? If I were to kick a softball, kick a softball, <laughs> kick a soccer ball, because it, when you kick a soccer ball, right, you shoot it off at an angle, and we can predict where it's gonna land. Or if you are playing tennis, right, and you're standing, this is an interesting problem, because in this case, you're not starting at like a zero, you start at like a meter, a meter and a half, and you hit the ball with an arc, and then it bounces, and so here it's starting at a place higher, and then it hits the ground, which is lower. But we can predict, if we know the velocity and the angle, we can predict exactly where that tennis ball is going to land. So that's an interesting problem. I think tennis has two ends. Anything where we have something being shot, if you will, out of a cannon or kicked or something like that. And one last thing we need to talk about that I think it's at the bottom of the page if you're, if you're following along on the notes is if I have somebody who's throwing a, a, a snowball, right? And I am throwing it right here. Boom, I'm trying to hit my brother or something like that. Okay, boom. So the question asks is at what point is the vertical, it's the Y, right? Is the vertical velocity equal to zero? Well, that's gonna be at the top of the arc. So when it reaches this certain point, right, it's got both a, if you will, it's got a Vy and a Vx. We can have an angle, but the Vy as it rises, right here is where the Vy equals zero, at the top, the apex. It's got no velocity. And the second question that's interesting is if this has a particular speed, so let's say it's going at, you know, 22 meters per second or something like that, where else do you have the speed equal to 22 meters per second? Because as it's going f higher and higher, it's losing some of its speed, isn't it? 
but then it reaches the top of the arc and it comes down here and its speed here will be identical at 22 meters per second. Assuming, by the way, that these are exactly the same height. So this is at, you know, at the ground level, or this is at two meters where I throw the, the ball, and then here at two meters, I hit my brother or whatever, right? So it, it will have exactly the same speed. Notice I use the word speed and not velocity because you will have, if you will, a positive velocity here and now going downward a negative velocity because speed is uh, non-vector or non, uh, not a scalar. So that helps us to understand the big picture projectile motion. Now what we're gonna have to get into next is how do you do a projectile motion problem? Stay tuned. See you in class. Okay, right. we've had a problem here. Mrs. Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem.